Hey guys, so um, I've been reading this book for my class, Tehard and the Future of Humanity, and it's not actually Tehard's work, it's um, people who are advocates of him or are very familiar with his work, and they apply his ideas or find that somehow their ideas are related to his. And um, it's a very interesting book. If you're looking for a modern uh, interpretation of Tehard's ideas and analysis on how they are... Um, playing out in the world, I, I do recommend this book. It's published by Fordham University, my school. Um, I, was very, I was very happy to find this in my library. Uh, so, uh, what I want to tell you a little bit about is quantum evolution, and the, the actual essay is called The Emergence of Consciousness in Biological Evolution and Quantum Reality. And uh, he makes a couple of assertions, and it's very interesting. He basically takes the principles of uh, what we know about quantum physics and says how does that play out um, particularly in DNA replication and uh, in mutation, genetic mutation. So he starts out with a few principles. Uh, one, the basis of the material world is non-material. Uh, two, reality has a nature of an indivisible, non-separable wholeness. And three, quantum entity entities possess properties of consciousness in a rudimentary way. Uh, basically what he's saying is uh, the material world is based off of probabilistic bits of information, tendencies, um, and, and they're, they're not things in themselves as much as they're more like thoughts. And it, He doesn't really go more in, too much into detail, but we just know that information at the heart behind the physical matter uh, seems to be what uh, physical matter uh, manifests uh, causally from, if that makes sense. So that, in other words, the deeper reality is more information-based from to which the physical reality manifests or actualizes. Um, and he also says reality has a nature of an un indivisible, non-separable wholeness. And this also has a lot to do with quantum physics and what they're finding and how you know, one atom one particle uh, influences another particle, and it could be at the other side of the world, and it just seems to know um, if they're connected somehow, if they're entangled, this is called quantum entanglement, um, what you do to one atom or particle influences the other one, even if it's seemingly not connected at all. So this, this sort of entangled web um, seems to be a deeper reality in which things are more connected, or as he's, he is positing, um, indivisible and already whole. Um, and then, of course, quantum entities possess properties of consciousness in a rudimentary way. And I don't know if it's entirely very, uh, completely accurate, but the way he describes this as, um, well, consciousness is, as, as far as we know, is very similar to information processing. It's not information processing, and I, I don't think it is, but it's a big part of it. It's, it's, it's a knowing and the knowledge. And quantum properties seem to behave in a way that would uh, we might deduce that there is an observer or something going on. It's almost like they consciously act one way or another if they know that they're being um, looked at, if, if you know what I mean. I don't know if you've seen any of these studies, but um, these quantum properties behave differently if there's an observer. Um, so I found that to be very interesting and somewhat creepy. So there's something uh, a little messy and more more like thought um, and more like consciousness. Not necessarily consciousness, not necessarily thought, but more like it um, at a more quantum level. And this is what he begins with. He, he kind of just sets that up. Um, and then, of course, he, he goes into, uh, I guess I would just like to show you the the gist of the argument. He goes into uh, quantum selection instead of uh, natural selection. And I would just want to read to you just a little quote that summed it up nicely. Um, one second. Yeah, it is, it is one of Darwin's famous postulates that nature does not make jumps. In contrast, Contemporary physics tells us that nature makes nothing but jumps, namely quantum jumps. As it seems, this as it seems, the overall progression of evolution 
is not exempted from this law, because the succession of evolutionary levels is frequently not gradual, but everything seems to have burst into the world already made. And then he goes into the theory of punctuated equilibrium. Um, basically, he's saying it's, it's somewhat very similar, a state of geo, uh, stability followed by a jump to another state of stability. And since quantum processes are very much like this, uh, one state actualizing, then another state actualizing um, into matter, um, he's thinking that evolution has something very similar going on. It may be more quantum in, in, in reality. Uh, evolution may have more quantum properties than we've taken into account. Um, so then he goes on to say, the formation of chemical bonds in the course of a mutation is a quantum process. Transitions among quantum states are involved. Because there is a choice between a large number of virtual DNA uh, states, a selection is made in a mutation, and differences in transition pro probabilities will favor the selection of some states over others. This is a form of selection, but it is not natural selection. It can be adequately termed quantum selection. Uh, but basically he's saying, we don't know this for a fact, but this is a very interesting hypothesis that is worthy of a lot of attention, and I definitely agree here. To what degree does quantum do quantum properties influence the seemingly higher order properties such as matter and biology? Because if they do influence us much more directly, um, it may revolutionize our, our whole view of natural selection. And uh, I guess I would just like to quote one other thing. And by the way, he calls this VSA, virtual state actualization. Um, before an actual physical thing is in a physical state, it's in a virtual array of possible states collapsing into or manifesting or actualizing into one state or another. And he thinks that um, genetics have that already going on too. They have virtual states of every possible thing and then the most probabilistic one, the most the one with the most potential will, will manifest here in this reality, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, this brings about the important difference between Darwinism um, and the quantum perspective of biological evolution. In contrast to Darwinism, VSA hypothesizes uh, the existence of an underlying, non-material, and coherent order of all reality, uh, a realm of potentiality which at the same time, which is at the same time imminent because it is contained in the things and transcendent because it is not stored in visible forms and part of a virtual cosmic structure, which actualizes, um, of course, in our time and in our reality. So that was a really uh, cool article, and he basically applies this to Tehard's ideas for about uh, evolution having a direction and cosmic structures. Uh, so if you haven't heard of this, and I haven't mentioned the guy's name yet, geez, um, this article... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Lothar Schaefer, S-C-H-A-F-E-R. Um, and you can look it up under Quantum Evolution, it's the second Wikipedia link. So I'm going to keep that in this art, in this uh, link right here. So if you've listened so far, and if I haven't lost you, please let me know what you think about this very interesting subject. Um, pretty sure it's not a mainstream hypothesis yet, or theory, it's more of just an emerging hypothesis. Hopefully it will have more um, analysis in the future by scientists, but thank you for listening.